I want to talk a little bit today about time-lapse photography. Time-lapse is basically a sped up video, but a normal video uses 30 pictures every second to create the illusion of motion, and it records 30 pictures of the scene every second. In time-lapse, you record one picture maybe every five seconds, but when you play them back at 30 pictures or 30 frames per second, it looks like very rapid motion. In my last video, I used a lot of time-lapse photography to record the work that I was doing so that I could show the entire process without waiting 30 minutes while something cut out. Time-lapse is used in a lot of things. Uh, it, if you record something that moves fast with time-lapse, you can start to see patterns in the overall motion of an object. In this case, I was recording some rides at the fair, and you, for one, get to see how quickly the rides are over. Uh, Time-lapse can also be used to record things that unfold very slowly. Things that look like they're not moving until you speed them up to a high degree. Uh, in this case, clouds passing over, um, sand blowing in the desert, or uh, the sun setting. But the problem with CNC and time-lapse is that you're recording something fast, the motion of the tool, and something slow, the development of the cut. And the tool becomes very distracting when you're trying to watch the cut develop. So I wanted to think of a method for getting the tool out of the way every time I took a picture for my time lapse so that it would just show the cut developing in the material. So I went back to my tool, which was set up with a camera mounted to the tool pointed at the cut area. And I thought if I wire my camera into the HandyBot so that the HandyBot itself triggers the shutter on the camera and make sure that the shutter is only triggered when the cutter is out of the way, then I can create this illusion of the cut happening without any router getting in the way or moving around. So the way that this was accomplished was wiring the cable release that triggers the shutter on my camera into the outputs that control the spindle normally on a shop bot. Now, when the spindle starts up, the software is telling the tool to close this circuit right here, which triggers the spindle, spindle to start. All modern ShopBot tools have two spindle outputs to allow the user to use a second spindle if they want to. So in this case, we can let one output control the spindle and the other control the camera. And I'm going to test it out right here. Just turning on output one, starting up the keypad, that simulates the, the uh, turning on of a spindle, and I can see here that it works. I set up a quick little test where I ran some lines of code and then inserted a line that was going to trigger the camera shutter. And I also added a line that was going to move the tool out of the way so that the camera was always in the same place when it took a picture. I decided to test out this idea on the water droplet cut that I did in the last video. I'm going to need to edit the code a little bit. And for this, I'm going to be using a text editor called Notepad++, which allows me to look up things using regular expressions and make replacements. I'll go into more detail on this on a blog article that I'll post in the description below if you want to follow along with the technical details. To make a long story short, I needed to find a location in the cut where I could interrupt the cutting and insert the command to take a photo. Looking at the 3D rendering of this cut in vCarve, I see these light blue marks in the toolpath. These indicate positions where the tool is jogging up and moving into position for the next pass at the cut. I think that because the tool is not going to be in contact with the material at this point, that would be a good place to insert this photo command. The cut works by doing a bunch of concentric circles at different heights to create the droplet shape. And in between each circle, there is a jog up, back, and down again to move to the next layer. I want to intercept the tool in between those jog motions, pull it out of the way, and trigger the camera at that moment. So the camera will be positioned over the material at that time, and the shutter will be triggered every time the tool gets out of the way. So in practice, what this will look like is the tool cutting a circle, getting up and out of the way, taking a picture, coming back for another circle, out of the way, picture, circle, out of the way, picture. And cycling that and creating each of the frames for the time-lapse video that I want to record. 
Now, aside from some flickering due to me walking around in front of the lights the whole time, this turned out pretty well. And I can reverse it and watch the material come back together as if the uh, cut is being undone. Now, I was thinking that it would also be really cool to add some motion to this. So I changed the code a little bit so that the camera would move slightly between each frame, which would give the illusion of flying over the shape as it was being cut out. Now that I've got my technique down, I want to try it on one of my favorite types of projects, and that is cutting out topographical maps. Uh, I'll link to a video in the description for the instructions on how to set up a topographical map cut, like the one I'm going to demonstrate here. But the main thing was I wanted it to look like the canyon was being eroded into the surface of the wood. So this is my first attempt, and I wasn't really satisfied because it it looks clearly like something is being machined away rather than being eroded into the wood. And the problem here is that the way that VCarve programs this kind of cut, it cuts the deep stuff first and then it works its way up and outwards, and which makes a lot of sense for an efficient cut, but doesn't create a very cool looking um, prog progression of the cut. It just kind of looks like this expanding strange shape. So instead what I did was I did the entire canyon cut at once at a height somewhat above the material, and then I lowered the tool between each repetition of the cut until the canyon was fully embedded in the material. So I repeated the cut 13 times and lowered it a little bit each time and recorded that as a frame. And this is what it looked like in practice, and this is what it looks like sped up. Once I was done with that, I thought it'd be pretty cool to um, machine the material away slowly and record a video of that and then play it in reverse. So it would look like the canyon was sort of materializing out of nowhere. So this is what it looked like running forward at high speed with the tool. And my recording of it looked very interesting, I think. And it's also pretty cool that you can see the grains of the wood as you're slicing through. So I hope that you all found this interesting. And uh, definitely, if you're interested in trying this yourself, follow the links to the detailed instructions on how to get your software set up to do this and to write your own code. It's a lot of fun, and it makes some really cool-looking videos of your cuts.